scorching. No, it's torrid. Wait, no, it's hot! Can you please stop making a fuss? Anyone who can keep their cool inside a volcano needs their head examined. I can feel the power of the Earth Pulse flowing upward. This is the life spring. That's odd. Melchior isn't here. Have you devoured even Shigure, Lord of Calamity? But remember, the only exorcists whose souls are worthy of sacrifice are Shigure, Oscar, Teresa, and me! He's above us, at the volcano's peak. With three souls, you can only awaken three Empyreans! That won't be enough to seal Inominat's power! If you are missing even one, awakening them will cause this volcano to explode, with you inside it! If you seek to awaken all four elemental Empyreans, then come! Try and take my soul from me! What do you think, Magilu? Trap. Melchior's greatest strength lies in his power over ice. I only wish we could lure him down here. But we dare not forget. He's an exorcist who spent years plotting to awaken an Ominat. Exactly. He could be capable of anything. It'd be dangerous to assume otherwise. Maybe this is the wrong time, but Magilu, you're related to Melchior, right? You'd better believe it's the wrong time. Long ago, I was Magilanika Lu Maven, Melchior's foster daughter, and before I was cast out, his disciple. Magilanika? <gasps> the, the lost legget! Huh. So even after ten years, my name still lives on. I'm impressed. You must have commanded a lot of respect. Not in the least. The relationship between Melchior and I was like that between Velvet and Artorius. The debts owed, and the grudges held. Velvet, you don't have to believe me. You may never believe me. But I tell you now, I want to settle my- I don't much care about the affairs of a witch, now do I? I'm going to the peak to find him, just doing what I want. Like always. Yep, that's right. And I'm going with you. Like always. Piece of cake, it's a cinch, piece of cinch. It's scorching, it's freezing, it's scorching. What are you muttering about? You told me to chill out when I complained about the heat. Is that still bothering you? I heat up quickly and cool down slowly. I'm not bothering anyone, so go on, get lost! That's even more annoying. I mean, come on. If it's both hot and cold, it's not scoresing. It's freezing, clearly. That doesn't sound like me at all. Wait, that's not even my point! My skin feels like a frozen shell, but somehow my insides are boiling! This is miserable! It should be one or the other. I can't stand this fence-sitting! Oh? Well, so what about the pineapple and sweet and sour pork? A sweet omelette? The crime against nature. Chocolate-covered raisins? Whoever thought up dried grapes should be hanged! Well then, what about peach pie? I don't see what you're getting at! What about yourself? Utterly vile. Doesn't that make you a fence-sitter? That's why I'm having you eat that old man and shove him into the life spring. I hope you learn to like yourself. <sighs> don't try to embarrass me. Here I come! 
I'll cut down anyone in my way! We will need to be extremely wary. We just need one last soul to awaken the elemental Empyreans. Are you alright, Velvet? I'll eat Melchior, and our collection will be complete. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about you. 
You collapsed after the thing with Teresa and Oscar, remember? Ah, <sighs> you wonder if I'm fine after eating Shigure. It's not a problem. But wasn't Shigure a lot more powerful than they were? But look at me. I'm fine, right? Does it seem like I'm faking it? No. I think I'm just used to it. Both my body and mind. You're not just used to it. You've changed. Mm -hmm. Just as I changed after finding my free will, you've gotten stronger through our travels, too. You faced down many sorrows and hardships and overcame them all. Did I, though? You did. And that's why I... Ah! Uh. I'll make you a quiche later. Could you make pudding, too? Sure. But are you just trying to butter me up so I'll cook for you? Well, I mean... Uh, yeah. How did you know? You really have grown a lot, haven't you? All right. Let's go and find me some milk you're to eat. Yeah! I'm not sure what Melchior is really capable of. What kind of man is he? To put it short, he's the Exorcist's shadow. Their shadow? They're supposed to be free of malevolence, but they're only human, and so are those who they want to save. But sincerity and conviction alone won't save the world. To remain free of malevolence, they need someone to do their dirty work. A shadow. I see. And that's Melchior's job. During all my time at the Abbey, I was never aware of what he was really doing. 
So, why hasn't he succumbed to malevolence? Because his belief in the Exorcists as the saviors of the world is pure and unyielding. It is a mountain of ice that will neither boil, nor melt, nor break. I know the depths of his frozen heart all too well. Uh, wait! Does that mean you...? Yes. Melchior was raising me to be the shadow for the next leader of the Exorcists. Artorius himself. But that was a terrible mistake. I was unable to live up to his expectations. So if things had gone as he planned, we'd be fighting you instead of Melchior. I'm glad that didn't have to happen. True. If Mogulu was running the Abbey... They would be completely unpredictable. That would be fearsome. Maybe. But doesn't that sound like a whole lot of fun? So Melchior was my shadow too. Oh, feeling too sympathetic to fight him. I wouldn't say that. There's nothing to be sad about. Removing shadows is part of a shadow's job. Even if I'm a failed shadow, I'm still a witch and I cast a deeper darkness. I can see the peak just ahead. If Melchior's anywhere, he's there. Be careful. That crafty old buzzard is nothing like Shigure. He won't fight us head on. Is victory for us really possible? We're facing the legate, Lord Melchior. I'd give us around four to one against. Four to one? Are our chances that slim? Almost every trick I or any current exorcist knows can be traced back to him. If I throw out three arts at once, he'll pull six out of his hat. He knows our capabilities, and he's got far more power. Four to one might be generous. I suppose you're right. However, we have Velvet, the boy, and Rokuro. Who knows what value they'll add when they run amok? It's impossible to calculate, but if luck goes our way, our chances will rise considerably. Right. We are challenging the hardest possible foe. But I'm only talking about a straight-up fight. Knowing Melky or he'll have some nasty tricks. No matter how you analyze it, the outlook is grim. Aizen, you too? What's wrong with a level-headed look at things? Careful consideration could give us the tool we need to turn the odds in our favor. After all, Magilu, forewarned is forearmed, right? Yes, that's true. Even still, we won't find a weakness in him. Let's take another hard look. What we need might be lying right at our feet. At our feet, eh? I'll keep my eyes on the ground as we walk, then. I'll end this We're finished here. Reporting for duty. The four elemental Imperiums are the beings that maintain the balance and harmony between Earth Water, wind, and fire. Have we even stopped to think about why they sleep? About what waking them will do to this world's order? Not really. I don't much care. They sleep because of arrogant, insolent wretches like you. 
The Empyreans derive their power and that of their blessings from the prayers of the pure at heart. But humans became corrupted and neglected their prayers. The forgotten Empyreans drifted into slumber. Human prayers are the source of their power? Just like the Malachim. Are you trying to say Inominat blesses someone when he eats their soul? As the fifth Empyrean, Inominat's purpose is to eat human souls, malevolence and all, and to wipe the slate clean. When all mankind is once again pure as a newborn babe, the elemental Empyreans can be safely revived. You want to wipe the slate? But that means... Yes, civilization will crumble. The spread of malevolence, the cleansing of the Nominat, the cycle has repeated countless times over the eons. That is why human civilization rises and falls. But if this continues, humanity will never surpass a certain threshold. Thus, the Abbey will control Illuminat's power, so that we may guide humanity into a new, better era. It all makes sense now. You developed the art of armatization to control Illuminat. And, in order to create the Armatus, you needed the technology found in Siegfried, didn't you? So that's why you got Eifried involved in all of this. Just as light cannot exist without darkness, no great achievement comes without sacrifice. Even I must be made tribute for the sake of our ideal world! You. He's a crafty old buzzard. I should have known it wouldn't be that simple. Die! Yeah. Rebellious <laughs> Ready to die? Think you can dodge? Just try! Perfect mayhem! Is it hot or is it hot? <laughs> Give 
driven by the coldest cold. There you shall perish! Absolute freedom! Hear me! There you find your knife! Breaking focus! to add years to his life. Centuries, even. Is that what you call rational? Sounds like an obsession. <sighs> I've said the same thing thousands of times. If it were my choice, I'd have let myself die naturally long ago. But did he not say? Man can turn reason into disorder, but also can we surpass it? Our true power is in transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. So were the words of the exorcist Claudin. They were foolish. Think what you will. I'll show you the truth of his words. You think illusions will work on us now? <laughs> Not in the least. But it bought me enough time to finish my art. Are you trying to set off the volcano? You'll die too! I take the Lord of Calamity with me. I have no regrets. That's because I'm for a reason. Emotions are a real pain, aren't they?
What was that? The elemental Empyreans have awoken. We are free. We will no longer be your tools. Oh dear, what's happening? You saved us, Mogulu. Thanks. If you hadn't thrown Melchior off balance, we'd all be dead. I settled my own affairs. Nothing more. But if you want to thank me, I accept gifts. I take it back. He couldn't hurt those flowers. Was that his oath? No. That old fool loved flowers more than anything else. Far more than he did any living human. That's all there was to it. I suppose even a legate can never fully control his heart. Same goes for a witch. Sometimes living can be the hardest affliction. Have the four elemental Empyreans awakened? Who knows? But anything that would sleep through that isn't worth our time. Better watch your mouth or they'll smite you. I can feel a shift in Inominat's domain. Yeah. All four of them have awoken. Inominat has been pushed out from the Earth pulses. Humanity's amplified resonances will diminish, and many Malachim will regain their free will. The Exorcists will likely lose a good chunk of their forces. Eleanor, have you lost your ability to fight too? Sorry to disappoint, but I can still see you. Evil demons, Malachim, and witches alike. You know where he is. I can feel him. His body has left the Earth pulses. He's somewhere above the Empyrean's throne now. Arturius is with him. However, Inominat is pushing back against the other Empyreans with incredible force. If the four are defeated, we'll lose our last chance. No time to waste. Let's go. It's time to end this. Yeah! The mountain doesn't appear to be erupting. Or doing anything else, really. I'd say that's a relief. Were Melchior's claims only a bluff? I'm not convinced. Most of his threats had as much truth in them as he could muster. With the four Empyreans revived, the land is awakened. Changes in the Earth that once took eons will now happen in a few hundred years. A few hundred years? The mountain will erupt, but not for a long while. A long while to a human, maybe. But compared to the history of the land, it'll be a blink of an eye. But Inominat is the Empyrean of Suppression. Who can say what will happen when we kill him? <gasps> well, it's not like I care anyway. I think we should care! Melchior sure was strong, wasn't he? Yeah. If it weren't for Mogilu's help, we wouldn't have stood a chance. But you saw the opening she gave us and took it. Did you want to be the one to finish him off? If it mattered to me, I'd have fought him alone. We all had our reasons to fight him. The opportunity just happened to be yours. That's all there is to it. I understand. If Melchior had only manipulated Eifried for personal reasons, then that would be settled now. But he was acting based on his idea of reason. That creating a world without malevolence was worth the cost of destroying people's free will. Eifried won't be avenged until I destroy that very philosophy. Your business with the Abbey isn't done. Not even close. You all could just sit around twiddling your thumbs, and I'd still take the heads of Artorius and Inominat on my own. If you want to be the ones to finish them off, you'll have to beat me to it. Huh. <laughs> You're on. I'll fight with everything I've got. That's all I can do. That's plenty. I really don't mean to pry, but I've got to know. Does it feel good to pinch all those souls out from your stomach? That's kind of a gross way of putting it. I have to agree with Velvet. The way you put it sounds so... inappropriate. I'm pretty sure that was her point. Oh, I'm sorry. Why so cranky? I was only asking to see if you were getting hungry or not. Then ask that in the first place. Are you? 
hungry that is. I do feel hungry, now that you mention it. But I don't think it has to do with losing those souls. Then why is it? Maybe my appetite is increasing as Inominat's suppression weakens. Yeah, suddenly feeling hungry myself. My stomach could start growling at any moment. I have been thinking of nothing but delicious things to eat for a while now. I bet Mogilu only brought it up because she's feeling peckish herself. No, no, that's not the reason at all. That settles it then. When we get back to the ship, you can take guard duty while we eat. I'll make a quiche and pudding. I'll cook up some penguin and tomato stew. Ooh, I'd love to try your cooking, Madam Eleanor. Let's get back to the ship. <laughs> Getting all fired up about food, I would never... I would kill for a big bowl of sweet collegian style borscht! Then go find me some peaches. Why peaches? Because you can't have collegian borscht without peach pie for dessert. <laughs>